Hey guys, Tony here, and I just got back from ISC in Barcelona, where I was invited by Trinoff to share an interview with CEO Arnold Labori, where he breaks down the brand new technology that they have been developing at Trinoff for the last six years to do with active acoustic treatment utilizing subwoofers. Rather than me trying to explain what is a very complex topic, I will hand over to Arno, where you will hear in his own words how the technology works. So I'm uh, Arno Labori. I'm co-founder and CEO of Trinov Audio, a company that I created with two friends 20 years ago. And uh, we at Trinov, we are all passionate about sound and acoustics. And we are very happy to be here at uh, ISE 2023 to introduce what we believe is a, a revolutionary technology, especially this year, uh, because it's the 20 years anniversary of Trinov Audio and uh, innovation is part of our DNA. We really started that company to really push the boundaries of the, the possibilities, the scientific possibilities of, of sound. And uh, we are very happy to partner with Crix, with uh, Officina Acoustica and Sony to present. Uh, it's not even a product that we are presenting here. It's, um, it's, it's a vision of the future of uh, room acoustics and uh, I think that what we are showing here is a tipping point in, in the, the acoustic technology because we are combining in, in a very unique and new way uh, passive acoustics and active acoustics. The, the main difficulty with, with sound and, and especially in, in a home theater is the low frequencies. And as soon as you put one loudspeaker in a room, the loudspeaker will not only project the sound to the audience, but will also produce sound to the walls. And here starts the problems because the walls, they will reflect the sound and the reflection will combine with the original sound of the loudspeaker. And it's something that we call sound interferences. So when two sound sources combine, they combine in a way that is constructive, but also destructive. And as soon as we have interferences, we have a very non-uniform sound reproduction. And interferences happen in many different ways. It can be like we use two loudspeakers that are far apart and they produce interferences between themselves. But interference can also come from a reflection. And this reflection will combine with the original sound of the loudspeaker, creating a lot of cancellation and, and a very non-uniform uh, reproduction. This is really the, the difficult problem to solve. And uh, there has been a lot of proposals to try to mitigate this room uh, resonances or these room reflections and ultimately room resonances and, and room modes. And as an example, the typical way of, um, of placing like four subwoofers at the four corners, it's trying to produce two wavefronts or four wavefronts from the four subwoofers that collide in the middle of the room. And the collision of these two wavefronts is at the origin of the standing waves and at the origin of the reflections. So we wanted to develop a new way of controlling the room acoustics that is not fighting against the physics of acoustics, that is not fighting against the propagation of sound, that is really working with the propagation of the sound in a very natural way. We developed the idea of that technology that we would use multiple loudspeakers or subwoofers to control the room acoustics. The development led us to uh, a concept that we call multiple source, multiple controller optimization, in which we, we really want in the first place to create a very nice and clean first wave front to the audience. So really the approach is to, to control how we produce the sound in the room in the cleanest and most natural way. But while doing that, we also want to minimize the acoustic problem we generate from the source. And we create a wave front. And as we create this wave front, we steer the bass to the audience and not to the walls. And by not sending sound to the wall, we avoid a lot of problems in the first place, like reflection, 
against the side walls, which end up creating modes, uh, um, horizontal modes, but also reflection against the, the, the ceiling and the floor, which end up creating vertical resonances and modes. And we do it in a way that it, it's not only about steering the, the, the sound to the audience and, and not to the walls, but it's also about including the walls in that process. Uh, because the technology we developed is based on acoustic measurement, so we actually know exactly the sound field in the room. So we know exactly what is the three-dimensional response of the room acoustics uh, because our technology includes a way to measure the room in such a way that we understand 100% of the acoustic field, 100% of the acoustic response of the room in three dimensions. And as we know how the, the room reacts, we can optimize the way we produce the sound in such a way that including the walls, we optimize what comes back to the audience. And what I'm trying to describe Describe here is what we call room matched bass steering because we steer the bass. Not only we control the the, the the initial emission of the bass, but we also include what bounces back from the walls and what will ultimately come to the audience to the to the listening area. So it's really a kind of room aware uh, bass steering. We can resolve a lot of acoustic problems by controlling the, the directivity of the bass and, and controlling the directivity is, is very is a very common method in the mid and high frequencies. A lot of loudspeakers, they have a very well controlled uh, directivity with uh, waveguides, uh, with horns or even with, with line arrays or the, uh, the live uh, loudspeakers. And in a way, all we do is to implement this directivity control to produce the bass in the room in the cleanest and most natural way, avoiding problems from the source. But of course, and unfortunately, we cannot avoid all problems. As an example, uh, if we steer the bass to the audience, we will also steer the bass to the back wall. And there is no way to avoid, uh, to avoid that. So we implement a second uh, technology, which is acoustic absorption. And this is a new way of using loudspeakers. So instead of using loudspeakers as sound sources, we use them as uh, acoustic absorbers. And we use the loudspeaker to just absorb the sound actively to avoid the reflections and the bounce against the, the, the walls. And we found in our research that uh, to have a very effective absorption using loudspeaker, it's it's uh, more efficient to use loudspeakers in arrays, not as independent source, uh, because we found that if, if we try to absorb a reflection with one single loudspeaker, we achieve some amount of absorption, but we also achieve a lot of uh, reflection at the same time. And as we resolve some aspect of the problems, we also create new problems, which uh, is not what we want. So this is why uh, we uh, recommend to organize the loudspeaker in a very specific way, in such a way that the loudspeaker can really work as very effective acoustic absorbers. And it's not a, a random placement, it, it's a very specific uh, loudspeaker placement. But combining this, this dual approach, of multi-source emission and also acoustic control by absorption, we can resolve uh, almost 100% of the acoustic problems in the room. So some acoustic problems are resolved at the emission, like the sidewall reflection, floor, floor and ceiling reflections. Some are resolved by acoustic control absorption. So that's the case of the rear wall reflection. But many problems are resolved by a combined approach, resolved at the source, but also at the reception, if, if, you, if you want. 
with this new approach, we can we can really achieve a very uh, uniform uh, sound field reproduction. So the frequency response is very uniform across the entire listening area, and we we can fit the the frequency response of any point in the listening area within a very tight uh, tolerance, like plus minus uh, two dBs, and we even achieved a higher performance in some situations. But the uniformity uh, is not only about the, the frequency response, we also achieve a very good uniformity of the decay time. And we can really uh, drastically reduce the, the, the decay time at any point in the listening area. And the way we reduce that decay time is very uniform. It's, it's nice to reduce the decay, but it's even more important to reduce it in, in, a, in a very uniform way. Because if we have a very good decay reduction for specific frequencies, the decay will not be uniform. And the, the uniformity of the decay is how the, the room will sound. So if during the decay, one frequency disappears or another frequency is maintained and, and is dominating, then the, 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 the room will sound very unbalanced because the sound, the, the room will sound as the room decay. So it's very important as we control and reduce the decay that we really achieve a uniform uh, decay across all frequencies and across uh, all points in the listening uh, area. So as you understood, it's, uh, it's really a new approach and this technology has, has, has a huge potential, but it requires the, the optimal um, conditions to, to get the, the best results. And we don't consider that this technology will deliver the optimal result in any situation. So it's very important to create the right conditions from the beginning. And this is why we really believe that uh, uh, there should be a, a lot of attention uh, to the, the design and especially the loudspeaker placement. So it's very uh, important to respect some rules to make sure that uh, at the emission, all the loudspeaker will work together to, to create the very the first and clean wave front and that the, the loudspeakers that we use as absorber will be very effective uh, absorbers. So this is why uh, we partner with Cydia and we deliver trainings for all our partners, integrators, uh, dealers to give them th the possibility to create the best possible designs from the beginning and to achieve the performance by design. And we know that uh, Trinov, as a company delivering very advanced uh, signal processing technology, it needs to be combined with the best uh, design practice in terms of uh, uh, loudspeaker layout. And uh, we will release uh, guidelines about the, the optimal speaker and subwoofer uh, layout. And also, uh, we need to consider the, the acoustics. Uh, we don't say that uh, active acoustic is a replacement for passive acoustics. We believe that the, the two technology needs to work together. Uh, active acoustic is very effective in the low frequencies, up to let's say 100 Hz, maybe uh, a little uh, above. Whereas passive acoustics with a reasonable amount of material is very effective for the, the mid-high frequencies uh, from 20K down to maybe 300 Hertz, 200 Hertz, maybe 100 Hertz for uh, the, the, the most advanced uh, design. And really what we want to achieve is a uniform and consistent decay time across all frequencies, including active and passive uh, acoustics. So we have uh, by design two options. We can either have active acoustic work to a higher frequency or have the passive acoustic work to a lower frequency. Here at ISC, we are really showing the, let's say, the full potential of the technology. So we are using eight subwoofers in the front, eight subwoofers in the back. It can sound uh, unreasonable and it is, uh, frankly speaking, it's, it's over the top. Um, but really, this amount of, of loudspeaker of subwoofer is not necessary to, to, to deliver a very good result. All we need is to create a, a directional wavefront. So we want to steer the bass to the audience with a very uh, nice and clean wavefront. 
and we can start to achieve this using only three subwoofers arranged as a triangle. It allows to steer the base horizontally and vertically and already offer a nice level of control. Really what matters in this technology is the maximum distance between two adjacent uh, subwoofers. And to give practical uh, numbers, if the upper frequency is, uh, let's say, 80 Hertz, like the typical crossover frequency, so the distance between two adjacent subwoofers is around two meters. But if we want to go up to 100 Hertz, then we should bring a little bit the, 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 the two subwoofers closer to each other. So the distance is 1.7 meter. And if we want to go above, it's one meter. So I experienced this firsthand at the show in ISC, and I can tell you that it was something that I'd never really felt before, especially the seat to seat consistency. I'm used to having a main listening position and feeling that the other seats are compromised, but for the first time, I was able to shift to any of the 18 seats in this room and pretty much feel the bass was identical. So guys, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see my future videos. I'd like to thank Trinol for having me at ISC and also for Arno for sharing his valuable time with me. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down in the comments section and I'll be sure to get the team at Trinol to answer them. A very big thank you for watching, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.